In order to show you an example, we're going to look inside Inflammation Mastery at the section on migraine and fibromyalgia, which was also published as Pain Revolution in color and also brain inflammation in a discounted black and white grayscale printing. So what we're able to do these days is actually look inside the book and that gives me a chance to kind of review with you what I think are some of the more perhaps confusing terms and more complex disease models that ultimately underlie and support the scientific basis for the treatment plan that I've outlined. So let's look here at chapter 5.1 migraine cluster and other headaches. You can see that I provide a description and then dive right into the current model of pathophysiology which my point number one is to state that mitochondrial impairment is the origin of migraine and cluster headache. I then go on to connect that immediately with sustained glial activation which results from mitochondrial dysfunction and causes brain inflammation and hyperexcitation. Those concepts might sound new or perhaps complicated, but again, the advantage to being able to look inside the book and explain the major concepts page by page is that I get to show you these diagrams that I've created, again, showing the connection between mitochondrial dysfunction or mitochondrial impairment and how that leads in a stepwise fashion to microglial activation, astrocyte activation, neuronal hyperexcitation, and that leads to neuroinflammation, which then feeds back into more microglial activation. You can also see that represented here in another image, and this image actually formed the basis for calling this work pain revolution, because we're looking at this go around in a circle or a vicious cycle. Again, with mitochondrial dysfunction leading to microglial or microglial activation and astrocyte activation, leading back to brain neuron excitation. And this triad is what we now call neuroinflammation, which leads to central sensitization or increased sensitivity to pain inputs. After that introduction and those two preliminary diagrams, then of course we get into more details for understanding the pathophysiologic model that I present for chronic pain, migraine, other types of headaches, and of course, body-wide chronic pain syndrome such as fibromyalgia. You can see that I highlight some of the things that I consider to be important and all of the scientific citations are at the bottom of each page so that you can evaluate them within the context of the section that you're reading. Here again I have another model that I worked on actually for about eight years and this is a model of a glutamate neurotransmitter receptor and its neighbor, the GABA receptor, glutamate, gets converted into GABA if nutritional supply is sufficient. Also, nutrients modulate the inflow of calcium ions, and the specific nutrients that are illustrated here are magnesium and zinc. I provide quite a bit of description for these images, especially when they're more complex. You can see the description here takes up more than a page, actually two entire pages. And then the following pages provide a differential diagnosis for different conditions that can appear similar to migraine headache. And soon thereafter, we get into the treatment protocol, which again is modeled after my functional inflammology protocol and the FIND SEX acronym. Again, at the bottom of each page, you can see an abundance of citations to the peer reviewed scientific and biomedical literature. I also use these text boxes to pull out a few clinical pearls that are of particular importance for the management and treatment of these conditions, again, in this case, specifically migraine. Again, throughout the text, I've got emphasis and illustrations to help the information stay in your mind so that you can apply it clinically, whether you're treating patients or whether you're treating yourself. In the conversation on mitochondrial dysfunction, here I've illustrated for you the mitochondrial electron transport chain and items which either stimulate energy production or impair energy production. And you'll be able to see that those are different for each one of the five major complexes of the electron transport chain. On the following page, I have an outline of the entire metabolic process of ATP production going through glycolysis, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex into the Krebs cycle, and then the mitochondrial electron transport chain here. Also in the upper right of this image, we see alternative inputs such as fructose, fatty acids, ketones, 
alcohol and amino acids. So again, the way that I initially memorized and diagrammed this illustration is to divide it into five components, and these are glycolysis, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain number four, and number five, alternative inputs, fructose, ketones, fatty acids, alcohol, and amino acids. Now let's take a quick look at the section on fibromyalgia and complex regional pain syndrome. Again, you see that I follow, of course, the same outline or the same format, providing an introductory conversation and then outlining the clinical presentation and pathophysiology, again, well supported with an abundance of citations. Here we see images from published research showing the differences in mitochondrial size and function in normal healthy controls and patients with fibromyalgia. So obviously these scientific images underscore the physical organic reality of fibromyalgia as a mitochondrial disease. And then I follow this hard science, let's say, with some conceptual and creative images to help you understand how we used to see pain and how we currently envision the pain reception process as a much more dynamic and flowing and plastic process rather than the hardwired process which we all learned in anatomy and neurophysiology. These days, our understanding of chronic pain is much more creative, much more plastic, much more complex, and in fact is based on neuroplasticity and neuroinflammation. Also in the section on fibromyalgia, I review with you the 1990 criteria and the new criteria published in 2010. I also review the approved drugs for fibromyalgia, including the fact that each one of these drugs comes with a black box warning. I also review the approximate costs of these drugs in U.S. dollars. After providing an introduction to the disease, its clinical presentation, and social context, I then provide the most important considerations in the differential diagnosis of widespread pain and fibromyalgia. And then I compile the data into an innovative model of fibromyalgia, of course based on gastrointestinal dysbiosis, mitochondrial impairment, and neuroinflammation. And you'll see that I detail that over the course of quite a few pages, also providing more diagrams to provide additional insight and understanding into this rather complex and enigmatic condition. So just like we can all state things in different ways to provide a different understanding or a more nuanced understanding or to emphasize certain aspects, I can also provide different diagrams, each with a little bit of a different twist, we might say, or a little bit of different angle or perspective, to provide you more emphasis and more ways to appreciate, understand, and ultimately treat fibromyalgia. Here, for example, I provide a graphic representation of several different contributors to acute and chronic neuroinflammation. Additional diagrams here, in this case, showing a vicious cycle of pain and central sensitization, and again here, another diagram showing different contributors to neuroinflammation again, including mitochondrial impairment. Again, as we go through these pages, you'll see more diagrams here and here, more research, more emphasis, and again, of course, more citations at the bottom of just about every page. An additional diagram here on the mitochondria, more treatments, more research, and additional videos to help reinforce and give additional information on this condition, fibromyalgia. So now that we've taken a look inside the book of Inflammation Mastery and the specific section on migraine and fibromyalgia, printed in a discounted grayscale version as brain inflammation and in full color as pain revolution, now let's take a look at where the videos will be hosted and I'll give you a little bit more information. First of all, I already have some videos available. These are from our 2013 International Conference on Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine. I also have a section on human microbiome and dysbiosis in clinical disease. Also, we have a section on mitochondrial medicine and mitochondrial nutrition with speakers Matt Hershey from Duke University, Garth Nicholson from the Institute of Molecular Medicine, 
Michael Gonzalez from the University of Puerto Rico, and your current host from International College of Human Nutrition and Functional Medicine. Now we're talking about the video series on brain inflammation. And again, all of these videos either are already available or will be available very shortly. Access to those videos is available on vimeo.com forward slash ICHNFM forward slash VOD underscore pages. VOD in this context stands for Video On Demand. So these are the Video On Demand pages of ICHNFM hosted at vimeo.com. Each of these video albums will also have its own page, for example, vimeo.com on demand brain inflammation. And you can simply link to these different video albums from our page at ichnfm.org forward slash videos. So thank you very much for taking a look at this quick introductory video to the upcoming video books where in video format I actually go through each page of the book to explain the major concepts and any vocabulary so that you, as the reader, as the clinician and patient, can actually understand this information at a deeper level. And again, it also gives me a chance to provide you any updates to the material that have been incorporated into the protocol since the book was published. So again, thank you for your time and interest, and I look forward to bringing you more science and more clinical applications.